What is up everyone? Today we're gonna just chill. We're gonna take a beat together, okay? It's winter. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to film and chat with you guys. I feel like it has, sorry, that it has been a minute since we've just chatted. And I also, I needed to get ready for the day. I also have a couple of new products to try, some new drugstore type products that I've heard a lot about. I've gotten a lot of questions from you guys about, so I figured I'd throw them into this video. So that's what we're gonna do. I've got a couple of questions from you guys to answer as well. I have things to share with you guys about what's been going on. So it's gonna be one of those hybrid videos, baby. We're doing it all. We're chatting, we're answering questions, we're getting ready, and we're trying new products. <laughs> I did want to take a second to thank today's video sponsor, which is Casetify. If you've not heard of Casetify, you probably have, but they are the world's most well-known tech accessory brand. They make my favorite phone cases and phone accessories. So the current case I have right now is this cute one with like books on it. Isn't that adorable? Oh my gosh. So I really love all of the different print options. I'll show you a couple of the ones I currently have. The prints are so cute. Also wanted to add here that I love that their clear cases are optimized to prevent yellowing. So if you've ever had a cheaper clear case, I like the sleek look of it, but it ends up looking gross after a while. These don't do that, which is huge. So if you are a clear case aficionado, you would love the Caseify clear ones. But I love that you can also customize your cases. You could have a phrase or a word on it, your monogram. I have my name on this one here. So I love that. But I also love that they have their artist program. So it's a really culturally diverse group of artists that they feature on their cases. And there are some really, really, really cool ones. But I also love their Recaseify program. With that, they've had over 51,000 cases recycled. They use those cases to make future cases. So the cases are made from 65% recycled materials, which I think is so cool. And it's 20% less carbon emissions. So I'm just a fan of the brand. I'm a fan of the cases. Obviously, I've been using these for years. I also love some of their accessories. This is their phone strap. It is so cute. I I feel like this is the type of thing that when I am chasing my kids around or like we're grocery shopping, I have my grocery list on my phone. I love having my phone on this because then I can so easily just have it. I can be putting things in the cart, dealing with the kids, getting something out of the diaper bag, and then still have this at reach so I can just grab it again. That is huge, you know what I mean? Having a hand free, but still having your phone right there is amazing. And I just think this is cute. It makes me think of my childhood and I can't explain it other than that. And I just, I love it. I love too that Case Defy's cases are very protected. They're 20% more protective and they're drop test approved up to 8.2 feet. And it's actually even higher than that for their bounce cases, which I love. So I wanna also show you a close up of the bounce case corners. Those truly are my, I think my favorite version of the cases because they're the most protective and I really do drop my phone all the time. And I think the drop test protection is like 21 feet. It's something crazy. So I love that it literally, when I drop it, it bounces on that corner. And I think that's so cool. They have over 2000 designs available. And like I said, you can customize some of them. It really, you will never run out of options. You will definitely find something you absolutely love for your phone. So if you've got an iPhone, if you've got an Android, they have the new iPhone 14 cases out. If you are interested in checking out Caseify, you can get 15% off your order by going to caseify.com slash Jessica Braun. I'll put that link right at the top of the description box for you if you want to check it out, maybe peruse, see if something speaks to you that you want for your phone. I was talking to my Tyler, my husband, about case by cases, and I was like, you know, the thing is, we, and I've said this before in a video, but it's so true, we spend so much money on just our phone. It is so expensive and it's so scary when you drop it and you're worried about something shattering or something happening to it. So for me, having an actual really good case on it is worth it because I know that that very expensive thing I just bought is very protected. So, and it's cute, so. <laughs> anyway, thank you to Case of Five for sponsoring this portion of the video. So, let's go back. <laughs> I'll take my makeup off, I'm just kidding. <laughs> let's go back to where we are chatting and getting ready together. Alrighty, let's dig in to my little basket of goodies. The first thing we are gonna use is something new. Like I said, it's kind of a mix of new, and also just some other stuff. Also, some of it's still new, but I have used it, but I like, I'm still trying it out. So we'll get into all of that. And of course, just chat about what's going on. So first product we're gonna use, this is the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. It's got niacinamide. Um, I like their Power Grip Primer. In fact, I was just filming recently that declutter where I went through my foundations and primers. Y'all, 
first of all, video is already up. If you want to check it out, I can link it. I got rid of, I should have actually counted. I'm always good about counting. I didn't, I'm pretty sure I got rid of like 80% of my <laughs> foundations and primers. So many of them have gone bad. Some I didn't like, some of the shades are wrong. So if you want some like inspo to be like cutthroat with decluttering something, go check that video out. But anyway, the Power Grip Primer from e.l.f., the one that's green, is a favorite of mine and that is one of the few primers that I kept. So I am intrigued to try this one with niacinamide. Let's see, let's remind ourselves what niacinamide is supposed to do for you because I have in my mind what, I'm, what I always think of when I think of niacinamide, but I don't want to say it wrong. Hold on. So minimizes redness and blotchinesses. <laughs> wow, okay, that's the kind of day. Minimizes poor appearance, regulates oil, protects against sun damage, treats hyperpigmentation. My goodness. Minimizes fine lines and wrinkles. Um, when I think of niacinamide, I always think of the like kind of skin evening when it comes to like your pore size, but then I always think of like redness and it taming that kind of thing down. So I was not wrong, but there's apparently other benefits too. So that's cool. So it's got the same packaging as the original Power Grip, just a little. So let's see. I like this uh, kind of primer from time to time. I'm not huge on primers anymore just because, I don't know, I just feel like I'm always reaching for SPF, so it's never, I don't know. I'm like, how much time do I have to layer products <laughs> on my face, you know? And that's the thing that's the easiest to cut when I'm in a rush, which is most days unless I'm filming, you know? It definitely has that like grippy, grippy feeling to it. I love the idea though of it having skincare benefits because that's my thing with primer. I'm like, you know, at least with SPF, I know the good it's in theory doing for my skin. And a lot of the facial SPFs that are out there also have good skincare. Ooh, it feels kind of cooling too. But with primer, some of them have like good skincare. And so you feel like you're, it's almost like part of your morning skincare routine and then other ones don't and the ones that don't i'm like even i'm even less likely to put on because i'm like well i'm already gonna be putting on foundation that's not necessarily good for my skin depending anyway so this feels really nice we're gonna see how it holds on to the foundation we're gonna try see this is gonna be hard a lot of the first things i'm trying here are new so we ha we're not getting into the chat yet but okay this is the l'oreal true match super blendable foundation so i have never been able to find a shade match for myself in this line now I, obviously they've repackaged it, but I'm assuming it's the same formula. It's just with this slightly new packaging with the pump, etc. So I have N2 and I have C 2.5. The difference in these shades is pretty incredible. So N is neutral in this line and C is cool. It's pretty wild how different those shades are. So let me kind of put a little bit on my face and just see. I'm loving that there's a pump. So this is the C 2.5. That could work. I feel like it's a, maybe a little dark. It might be hard to tell. Let me see. And then this is the N2. Gosh. See, I like need something in between these two. So it's obviously not that one. So I'm. we'll go with this. We can always mix it too, but I don't know. Why am I so against mixing? <laughs> maybe we will. Let me mix it on my hand and just see. I mean, I've got them both. These I did buy because, I again, I was like, I don't know what shade. So the mixed version. Hmm. Not terrible. Maybe we'll do the mixed version and just see. No, I, I just want to do a straight one. <laughs> what is wrong? I think the reason I don't like mixing is because I know it's a step I probably won't take in my own normal routine. And for most of you guys, if you're trying to find a shade match, you don't want to have to buy two shades. But Jessica, it doesn't matter because they may be able to find a match. I don't know, guys. All right, we're going to mix it. And I'm really mad. I just, I just wiped all that off. So while I'm mixing this and getting this ready, we have had an interesting few weeks. And I know I've touched on this a bit, but our good friend, Brian, passed away. He was older. He was actually the person that um, made my wedding dress. He was a costumer, and that's how we met him in the first place. Um, he was actually a costumer at the theater that we met each other at, Tyler and I. Um, anyway, so we've known him for quite a while, and... It's really sad. Tyler was even closer with him and it's just one of those things, you know, it's life and it's, but we have been very blessed, Tyler and I, that we have not lost a lot of people in our lives just yet that we've been super close to. That's looking really pretty. Okay. The, the mixture is pretty good, huh? Yeah, definitely rocked our world. Um, we were also, we're all kind of getting over, well, at this point we're over it, but we were all under the weather as well. And so well, Tyler wasn't, that's what was crazy. The rest of us were though. 
Um, so Tyler was able to go to the funeral. It was like two hours away. We were not. We were that sick that I was like, there is no way. I mean, there is literally no way. Anyway, my point, okay, this is looking really pretty. I know that um, if you don't follow Drugstore Maven, if you don't follow Drugstore Maven, I especially love her Instagram. Uh, but she also, I mean, I love her YouTube channel too, but she just kills it at the Instagram game. She inspires me so much. I'm pretty sure this is the one that's like her holy grail drugstore foundation. If I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. So I've been wanting to retry it because the whole reason, I'm going to try to just mix it on my face. You know what I mean? Like put the light. People used to do this, right? People probably still do this, Jess. That's probably what I should have done in the first place. And you know what? If that's the way I'm doing things, that would make it a lot quicker. Just kind of piling it on. But does it actually mix, you know? I don't know. But I'm loving the coverage of this. Anyway, Drugstore Maven, go follow her because you will love her content, especially if you are into drugstore and saving money. I mean, she is like the queen. She is the absolute queen. This looks really nice. It looks really, really nice. It's sitting really well on top of that um, primer, so that's exciting. But just the finish of this foundation is gorgeous. I really think mixing it, I mean, I already own them, so I guess what's the difference? I can just mix them the way I just did on my face to make my make my life a little easier. I've made a mess of these already though. So anyway, needless to say, just kind of now at this point, a few weeks of just the doldrums, you know what I mean? Just kind of feeling very odd, you know, we're sad and we're grieving that, but then we'd been sick too. And then we just gotten back from a trip and the trip was amazing, but it was also a business trip for Tyler. And so he had these, he said to me, and I hope he doesn't, I'll have to ask him if he doesn't mind me sharing this in this video, but he was telling me, he was like, I've never had, because little background, we found out about our friend's death while we were there in Disney. And I don't know how we were vlogging. I don't know how we're going to handle including that in the vlog and like figuring out, I don't know. Because you can tell a marked difference in the Disney vlogs from before we knew and after we knew. Anyway, I'm just thinking out loud here. My point is, he was telling me, he was like, I've never fe felt such high highs and such low lows all within the same few days he was like, I, I almost don't know how to process any of it because it's all happening at the same time. You know, this business trip with all of his employees was so amazing. And it, it really, I mean, they were some very high highs. Um, but then, yeah, there's just that piece. So anyway, just sharing where we've been. So if you have noticed, like there was a time where I just wasn't filming. Um, you may have noticed, you may not have. I had some other things previously filmed, but then I pushed some other stuff back just to give us some time to... Um, adjust and realign and you know so we're, we're starting to feel back in the swing of things and back you know to our somewhat normal selves which is nice i'm going to use the milk makeup future fluid concealer i've been enjoying this i'm still kind of trying it out but i i'm working on my speed reviews video to come soon of all the new things i've been trying the past couple months and now that i've tried them longer what i actually recommend what i don't what i've changed my mind on all that that is to come i have not done a speed review video in a minute Anyway, um, that will most likely be a part of that video. Anyway, so we're, we're feeling back to as normal as we can be. Um, you know, Gigi's back in school now that she's better and all of that kind of stuff. So that is nice. And then, you know, add to it. I was talking with my best friend about this. Like, January is such a rough month, right? Like, and it, I think you may be watching this in February. I'm going to include February in with it, too. I turned 34 on January 22nd. A very um, lovely, just low-key birthday we stayed in because, again, I was right on the end of not feeling great. So um, we stayed in. We ordered pizza. We watched a movie. Actually, we watched, finally, the Knives Out Glass Onion. That was really fun. That was a fun movie. It was it was a lovely birthday is my point. And Gigi helped, like, decorate the uh, house. I was going to say, there, there was, like, a really sad balloon hanging from that. Well, it was cute at first. It got sad really fast from the helium. Um, kind of went out of it. Just throwing on the elf wow brow. I mean, he got me some really lovely gifts. Some of them I'm also working on. A, I'm clearly in planning mode for my channel. Um, my current faves um, coming up here in the next couple weeks. And a few of those that he got me are definitely going to be in there, like around the house type things that are just awesome. Anyway, I'm really excited to share about those. So another product that's new I wanted to try. Well, I think it's new. It's the, I've, yeah, it is. I was going to say, I'd never seen it. Um, it's the Milani Liquid Brow Wax. They're stay put Liquid Brow Wax. So this one's clear. And I'm just kind of curious. I have noticed uh, that, you know, if, I, if you change your shirt during the day, like for me, I will, like, if I, if my shirt brushes my brow, my brow hairs will, like, face down. And it just drives me nuts if I see it later. So 
I'm trying to be better if I can get this out um, about actually putting like a brow wax on, you know? It's got that kind of like white look to it, you know what I mean? Sometimes I feel like you can see in the brows and it's like hard, so I'm like, but if this helps my brows just stay in place without being like so almost regimented, that would be perfect. Feels pretty nice. I'm trying to think, this this reminds me of, of something I've used um, that feels good though. It doesn't feel too crunchy at all, but you can definitely feel that it's there. So I'll keep trying that. So yeah, the January, February like doldrums, right? It's especially when you live in a place where you don't see the sun a lot during this time of year. I just always try to remind myself that with each day, I say this every year to remind you guys too and to remind myself with each day that passes after December 21st, the days get a little bit longer, right? The sun sets a little bit later, even if you're not seeing the sun that day. And so, you know, with each day, each morning and night that you wake up and go to bed, you're one step closer to warmer weather. It's so funny though, isn't it? Because, you know, sometimes in the middle of summer, I'll be like, oh, I can't wait till it's like a snow day. And it's actually a really snowy day, the day I'm filming this. And then when you're actually in it, you're like, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait till summer. Humans. I did also ask you guys for questions, so I might kind of intersperse these throughout this, um, video so someone asked i'm 30 and i feel like i keep starting over i'm so disappointed in myself advice one thing is that i think it's very archaic to think about life as like being linear and not only that but that there's like the order that you're supposed to do life like okay i'm supposed to go to college and then i'm supposed to um meet someone and get married then i'm supposed to have kids and then i'm supposed to you know this and the other uh, I'm supposed to be successful in my career, have my career, especially when it comes, and I don't know exactly what you're referencing here. Maybe it's multiple things, but like, especially when it comes to jobs, for example, or careers, I just don't, we were just telling Gigi this the other day. She was talking about what, what job, what she wanted to do for work when she was older. And she was like, I want to be a mommy. And then she was like, I want to just, she's four, right? She's just saying the things she knows. She was like, I want to be a travel agent and she did not say it right and it was the cutest thing and I wish I were recording it but anyway she wanted to be a travel agent like daddy and then she was like I could work with daddy and like anyway it's so cute and when you're a kid you know you think of those things and even when you're in high school and you're going into college and you're picking a major or you're just going straight into a trade or you're going to a trade school you know you think whatever you're going to school for is what okay that's it that's what I'm going to do for life and the reality is it's just not it's just not, we don't really live in that age. We live in a world where I feel like now it's pretty normal to have different jobs as you get older. Like you don't have to stick with the same job your whole life. You can, if that's what you wanna do, but you don't have to. And I think that's important to recognize. Um, for me, I had a lot of student debt for, um, for a few years of studying musical theater that I don't use. And it sucks, it sucked to pay off that debt. I'm thankful as could be that I was able to, but my point is, you know, sometimes we make really expensive choices and mistakes, if you want to call it that. But the reality is your life trajectory led you to where you are now. And I just feel like there is no age that you're going to hit that you're like, okay, I don't know. I, I feel like you might be in your 40s feeling the same way. Like I might be doing YouTube and then when I turn 42 decide, you know what, I want to do something completely different. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I just feel like we have to break free of that cycle of, and of course I'm just say, singling out work or career or whatever, but it's true for so many things. Like even in relationships, you know, you might be in a relationship for a long time and then discover, oh my gosh, we aren't happy, <laughs> right? Happens all the time. And that's just, I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. I know people feel a certain way about it. We're not getting into this discussion right now. But my point is, I think if I were on my deathbed, I would not be thinking back to, boy, I'm so glad that by the time I hit 30, I had done this, that, and the other. I don't think I'm going to be attributing any age to any of the life experiences because I don't think it matters. If, if part of my life's journey is to have kids, great. If I have them at 25 or at 38, what does it matter? I wish we could like remove that kind of thing from the narrative in our minds and it's so hard, it's so hard. And I know especially like when it comes to being married and having kids by a certain age, if that was something you wanted, I feel like there's a lot of pressure people feel like, oh, I really thought by this age I would have this, that, and the other. You know what? You're not alone in that. And for everyone thinking that, there's probably thousands and thousands of other people thinking the same thing. 
And there's nothing, I don't know, I guess I could say there's nothing wrong with that over and over again. Maybe you just need to hear someone else tell you that. They, there's nothing wrong with it. And if you start over again and again, you know what? It makes life more interesting. And one thing I read, and I'm just gonna assume it's true, and the more I think about it, it does feel true. The more new experiences you have in your life, the slower time seems to pass. So sometimes like when, when I feel like life, like for multiple months has kind of been the same Monday through Friday, like everything's kind of similar. Time feels like it's flying by and I'm like, oh my gosh, like how is this, how is my kid this much older and this that, and the other, where did the time go? But when you're doing, like maybe you're taking a class you've never taken or you're just meeting someone new or you're trying different things, time actually seems to slow down in your mind. And I, I think about that a weird amount and I'm trying to be better about being open to new experiences that make me nervous. Um, so, you know, maybe starting over is a good thing. It's gonna make your life feel a little richer, a little more full because you are gonna be having new experiences. So I just used the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes. So looking at the price point for this, I just don't think it's worth the money. The mattes are really nice. That's what I just used. They blend very easily, but there's plenty of drugstore ones that do similar. The shimmers are kind of like toppers and um, I get it, I get it. You know, I've kind of messed with it more and watched some videos. Um, so they seem really like almost clear, but they can look really pretty on the eye. You can wet them. There's so many different things. I just don't think for the very, very, very high price point, it's worth it, you guys. So if you've been eyeing it and you've been thinking about it, I honestly don't know that you will love it. <laughs> and like, this is something that I've been forcing myself to use, but I really haven't enjoyed because I crave a few regular shimmers. So maybe these kind of toppers and this are exactly what you've been looking for, and maybe it is, but I think as a general rule, I just don't think so, guys. Are you still on meds? Did you have any side effects? I'm struggling with them. So I had this conversation with someone else in my life recently um, who was also trying different like um, anxiety medication or depression medication. I am not a doctor. Please do not take anything I'm about to say for anything other than sharing my experience, okay? I was on a very low dose of Lexapro and it worked perfectly for my postpartum depression. I did it again this time, kind of proactively, thanks to my OBGYN's recommendation. And I had an, a lovely postpartum period. I will forever say I'll never know if it was because I was already on Lexapro that it was better or if it was just a better postpartum period and I didn't have it. The reality is it doesn't matter because it, it all worked out, right? The person I was talking to was on a different medication and she was having really bad side effects, um, like super lethargic. Um, it just, it wasn't quite right. And the side effects, she was like, these the side effects aren't even worth it. So um, Lexapro, from what I understand, is kind of a more gentle version. It can still be just as effective, but side effect wise, it's usually not as crazy, at least in my experience and from what I've heard, okay? <laughs> I feel like I need to make that very clear. And the person I was talking to switched to Lexapro and it worked and they're not feeling the crazy side effects and et cetera, et cetera. So um, might be worth talking to your doctor about switching and always keeping in mind, and I'm sure your doctor would tell you this, that switching medications when it comes to like anxiety and depression, um, you know, you have to kind of be careful and this, that, and the other, so definitely talk to your doctor. But I am no longer on the medication though. I actually just very recently weaned myself off. So there you go. And honestly, if we have a third kid, I will probably do it again. Just cause like I said, the dose I had was really low, but if it helped me avoid what I experienced that first time around, it's totally, <laughs> totally worth it. It's amazing though, talking about mental health and that kind of thing how many people, I mean, I think everyone struggles with it in some capacity, but especially when it comes to like the postpartum variety, <laughs> um, how many people have told me, whether it's in DMs or in person when I've met you or whatever, that you also had it and didn't realize it until much later. And that's just kind of my experience too. So it's rampant, you know what I mean? It's rampant. And so just be aware, it's it's a thing and don't be scared to talk to your doctor. Two, oh, don't let me forget, I'm gonna be trying this mascara. Actually, I might do that here in just a second. <laughs> How do you feel post-birthday for this new year? I feel pretty good. I feel like, you know, there are certain ages you turn that are like more momentous and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm turning 30 or oh my gosh, I'm turning 60. I definitely did not feel that this time. What's weird? And I wonder if any of you guys do this to yourselves and maybe it's like as you get a little bit older, it just happens more and more. I had already mentally accepted that I was 34. And so there were a few months before I even turned 34 that I was like, yeah, I'm 34. No, I'm not. 
Like, what is wrong? Why am I already mentally? I feel like I'm like mentally preparing. Like, okay, Jess, you're going to be another year older. You know, we got to accept this. All right, the liner does not look super even, but that's okay. Um, so I want to try this e.l.f. Lash and Roll Mascara. It's curling and lifting. I've heard pretty good things. Um, I placed an order from e.l.f. a while ago, so I've kind of been sitting on these, waiting for the right video to try them in, and here we are, y'all. We made it. I'm assuming this is meant to be dupish for Roller Lash from Benefit. I mean, they're not even, like, trying to hide it. e.l.f. Lash and Roll. Same colors and all. <laughs> People are just unabashedly making dupes. But the thing is, it makes sense because it's like the easiest way to go viral is to be a dupe for a super popular product. I mean, and that's always been true, but especially in the world of short form, I almost said short form comedy. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I'm not a part of that world, but uh, short form, form content. Ooh, so it's definitely brushing through the lashes, you know? And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna see if this is buildable, but I'm gonna go ahead and say, this is probably not gonna be a, a wildly volumizing type you know what i mean so if you're into a very delicate lash and i feel like the roller lash is similar to that where you know you can build it up a little bit but it really is more of like a kind of chill type mascara not necessarily a super like va va voom but it can still look really really pretty and doe wide and to show you the brush kind of got a curve it's like that plasticky rubbery you know i feel like this could be a really pretty mascara too if you're doing no liner just because it does seem to grab a lot of the lashes and just looks really like light and fluttery. It's funny because every once in a while, I, I because I know what I like in my lashes, there's the part of me that's like, well, I don't love it because it's not super volumizing, but I have to always take a step back and remind myself that not everyone likes the version I like. And this still looks really, really pretty for that kind of a look. And I definitely lately have been going for more like chill looks like that anyway. But you know what I mean? So I'm trying to keep that in mind because I know a good amount of you, this is the kind of mascara you would prefer. And even like people in my own life, like most of the people I know in my own life would probably prefer this kind of mascara, not necessarily the kind I prefer. And it seems to be doing a good job curling it too, which makes sense considering it's called, oh no, it's called Lash and Roll. I was thinking it was called Lash and Curl. Wait, I am just now realizing that most likely it's called Roller Lash because it's supposed to be like a hair roller. <laughs> How am I just... And now I'm picturing the lid and it looks... Wait, is that what it's supposed to be, right? If it's not, then I'm insane. If it is, then I'm also insane for not realizing that. Oh, Jesse, What are we going to do with you? I've definitely caught Genevieve saying different sayings that I say all the time. <laughs> It's really illuminating. You know, certain words that I'm like, ooh, better stop saying that around her. <laughs> and even like ones that are actually pretty innocent, but like when you hear a four-year-old say them, you're like, all right, I should probably stop saying that because I don't like hearing it come out of her mouth. <laughs> she was cracking up that the snack, if you know of it, pirate's booty, which is like the little puff things. Well, I guess someone in her class brings them and eats them. And I guess Gigi's been eyeing them. And she was asking for it. She kept calling it Captain Crunchies. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I love her so much. Captain Crunchies. And I was like, what is she talking about? And finally, so I pull, we have peanut butter Captain Crunch, the best cereal known to man. And so I pull out that box. She's like, no. I said, well, honey, that's Captain Crunch. And I'm thinking maybe she means like a different flavor of Captain Crunch, like oops, all berries or the mix, you know, whatever. And um, my 90s is showing. So finally we were, I, we were at the store like a day or two later and we were looking for him. I'm like, all right, what is it? And she was like, it's like a pilot. I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, I wonder. So I show her it and she's like, that's it, Captain Crunchy. So I'm like, okay. honey, it's called Pirate's Booty. And then she kept calling it Pirate's Crunchy. And then when she like really realized that what I was saying was Pirate's Booty, she was absolutely losing it. That is the funniest thing in the world to a four-year-old. All right, that looks really nice. So like I said, if you like a more natural-ish lash that's curled, I do think you would like this. It's a drier, not a dry formula, but it's not super wet a lot that I feel like I've tried lately. I've got mascara all over me has been super wet and I just don't like that formula. This is kind of like the perfect, not too wet, not too dry kind of level. I think that looks nice. Okay, so next thing we're gonna throw on is bronzer. This is the Essence Sun Club Matte Bronzing Powder. This I remember, it's been a minute since I've used it. I remember it being like really, really nice, but I needed to kind of be careful with it. Is this the one? Yeah, I think so. But I mean, bang for your buck for a classic powder bronzer. This one's really, 
nice. I remember it blended in really nicely. So even when I went overboard with it, I was able to really easily blend it in and it would still look really nice. And that can be hard to find. And even some of the most expensive bronzers I've used are not always blendable and so annoying. <laughs> so I'm like, I can get this at the drugstore and it's blendable, you know? So I was just laughing and telling Tyler he's upstairs. I was like, everything that could have just gone wrong in the past like two seconds did. My, the camera overheated, the battery died, and uh, the memory card was full. I'm like, wow, it's the trifecta. Anyway, uh, long story short, I really like this bronzer. Um, this was the shade number three, Chocolate Sunday. Ooh, I don't know why DoorDash was open on my phone, but I'm loving it. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Let me see if there are a couple more questions. Um, this one's a good topic. You mentioned at one point you two weren't currently drinking. Is that still happening? Yes and no. We have just severely scaled back when we drink, how often we drink, um, just with, you know, when there's a lot of things going on in your life, it's easy to turn to something that would provide easy relief. And we both kind of realized, you know what, there's a lot going on this year and we don't want to fall down a rabbit hole of that. And then just plus just growing up and now we've got two kids and we're like, you know, it's just, you know, even after a couple of glasses of wine, I can feel just so like headachey in the next day. And it, any of that. So long story short, we just knew for our mental health, our physical health, for so many reasons, it was better for us to just, for a while, we just totally abstained. Tyler, how long did we just not drink at all? Three or four months. Yeah, like three or four months. Um, and so now we're kind of at a, I, I think we're just at a really healthy spot where from time to time when it's a special occasion or maybe we're out for a nice dinner, we might have a glass of wine or whatever, or if it's part of like an experience or something, but just being really choosy. Like on my birthday, we had a glass of wine. So I feel like we're just in a really good, healthy spot where, which is, this is where we wanted to be. So I'm really happy. And I really think taking a step back from it for a few months completely was the game changer in the equation. Um, for us to really see like we really don't need it for anything. You know what I mean? So anyway, oh, I want to retry the um, See this is where I'm torn. I really want to try the essence pure nude baked blush in the other shade But I also have the ColourPop Little heart blushes. So this is in hot to touch It's like a bright pink, but when you kind of swatch it it Like tames itself down. You know what I mean? I was trying to figure out, I even brought it down with me, if it was a dupe for the ever famous, where is it, Dior blush in pink. I was comparing this and a few of the others and really none of them are swatch wise a dupe. Let me, let me swatch it again so you can kind of see it too. I think the closest dupe is this one in Hot to Touch. So let me show you. This is the Dior pink one. This is Hot to Touch. And then this one was a little bit, like look how weird that looks. It's in the shade Sweetheart. And then this one's in Cupid's Bow, it's much lighter. So I would say if anything was a dupe, it'd be like I said, hot to touch. So let's try them. Now I'm, I'm just now deciding, let's try the Dior on one side and then the ColourPop on the other just to kind of see. So Dior one, it really is pretty. Like I know I've talked about like, I really don't get the hype behind this. I really still don't. <laughs> But it is pretty. It's not that it's not a pretty blush, but I do not understand why this is so hyped, always sold out, like, you know what I mean? So anyway, but I, I like it. It's not to say I don't like it. So let's try the ColourPop one. Let me get a different brush. Boy, that looks awfully similar. I think it might be a dupe. <laughs> um, like really, because I feel like even the finish of it is really similar. Let me look at it in different light to kind of like this direction. Yeah, I mean, y'all so i would say the one i feel like i've said the name of it hot to touch i think that's the one y'all so if you want to save the money i gotta film a, a, a TikTok about this i'm probably not the first one but i this is new to me so whatever anyway that is very exciting so highlighter wise i wanted to use um this ag again i i have used this a couple times um but i don't think i've mentioned in the video it's the new charlotte tilbury highlighter so i also have the brush that's supposed to go with it and i do think it's pretty but i don't think it's necessarily like different than any other highlighter whoa i went a little overboard oh well it's fun to go overboard sometimes. Well, then I like took too much off of this one. So I do think it's pretty. I've used it. I reach for it a decent amount, but again, it's a highlighter. I can probably easily dupe this. Maybe I will dupe it in my next dupes video because I'm pretty sure I have like four things that could be a dupe for this. So, but I do, I do like the way it looks. It's pretty. And then I am just going to throw on my lips the um, 
NARS Dolce Vita lipstick. It's truly a your lips but better color. It's kind of insane how similar this is to my lips, but just better. Let me show you a swatch of this. It's so pretty. It's such a just classic lipstick formula, slightly moisturizing. I feel like it's, you know, not necessarily that this formula is anything special. It's just that this color is so perfect and it is a really comfy formula that I'm like halfway through this lipstick bullet and I do not often use up lipsticks, I have to say. I have the song Better from the Little Women musical, Little Women, the musical stuck in my head. So somebody explain that to me. So to quickly talk about the products we um, used that were new and my like quick thoughts, um, the primer, I really do think that that foundation set really nicely on top of this. I already know that I like the power grip formula, but I love that this has added skincare. So I will probably end up getting rid of, I'm going to use this a couple more times before I decide, but I will probably just get rid of the original e.l.f. Power Grip and just keep this because I don't need both and I would rather it have good skincare. So I think that is cool. I am very, very happy with the way that my skin looks with this foundation. Um, very happy. I do think it's funny that in the True Match line with so many shades, I can't find a match. Um, if you are near my skin tone and you know what would work for me, please let me know. This has been like years and years of continually rebuying this every few years, trying it, trying different shades, none of them working. I've tried parts of the W range, like, so let me know. But I really like the finish. I love that they have pumps on these now. That makes me ecstatic. Like I said, I'm liking the ColourPop blush. I love that that is totally color wise and finish wise a dupe for that. Dior one, the mascara I think is lovely. I, even looking at it like in, with the completed look, I think it looks nice. Just very low key, fluttery and pretty. I don't think this is for you. If you like really volumized lashes, you might not love this. So there's that. But for the rest of you, it's nice. Milani brow wax. Gonna keep using, lovely. I mean, I have some really old clear brow gels I probably should just trash. So this will probably be my go-to clear brow gel for right now because it worked so far really well. The true test will be changing and seeing if my brows suddenly are like sad brows. <laughs> So that is everything. Um, I, that was fun. I hope it was very cathartic. <laughs> I know how to say cathartic, I promise. But if you get that joke, you get that joke. Tyler, did you hear me? Oh, he's gone. He and I say cathartic all the time. If you know what that's from, let me know. What am I even saying? I'm in a weird mood. So um, I hope this is enjoyable. It really, it genuinely was cathartic to just chat with you guys. I feel like it's been a minute. Cause even within vlogs, sometimes I'll try to sit down and chat. Um, but these are the videos where I really feel like I can kind of share what's going on, catch up with you guys, um, just take a moment together, take a beat out of this life to catch up. So I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see this video more often or at least once a month, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. I'm planning to do this kind of thing once a month as I have in the past, but I like the idea of trying some new makeup within this because a lot of times I'm just getting ready and using makeup I'm already using, which I'm cool with that too. So thank you again to Case Defy for sponsoring a portion of this video. Again, if you want to check out Case Defy for yourself, you can get 15% off your order by going to casedefy.com slash Jessica Braun. I'll have that right at the top of the description box and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.